Give an example from your life of how you achieved an objective. I think probably an, like an example would be, I remember I think it was my second quarter or third quarter at UCLA, and I it was the first time I've really just been humbled because I got a D minus on my first exam, and I it broke me down. Like I remember crying, and I remember thinking like I am not meant to be here, I'm not meant to like walk these halls, I'm not to meant, and I don't know what happens. I just told my I sat down, and I remember thinking like. I can do this. I just have to breathe. I, I, I can still make use of this. I, I haven't, I'm in the opportunity time to, to bring up the grade and to be able to finish strong. And uh, I remember making like a social media post because, as I said, the first exam was like a D minus and there was just these reviews from my TA. And the second exam that I took out of three, it was a B plus because it, I just sat down and, and she just, and, I, and my TA remembered, she said, amazing improvement from where you've been past couple of weeks and it's just one of those things where I don't know I never was the type of person like I like I'm not the smartest person in the world but I knew that I had to do I had to prove myself before anything else like if I was gonna leave that campus without a degree I was gonna leave on my own terms because I wanted to leave that was pretty much how I set the objective and I got it Wow what happens when you think you are going to fail and you actually succeed um, Privately, I try and find like a moment to myself and I just like laugh out of like disbelief and I just say and I just like let out the sigh. But let's say if I'm in like a public area, I have to remain face and I just have to say, okay, we got, I would say better than I thought and just be professional. But I will always find like a private moment and just either in my car or, in, or like in the men's room and just like just sigh and like kind of laugh because it kind of sounds a little like a hysterical laughter, so I don't want people to freak out. So that, that those would be the moments of after, like, if I expect a, like a failure, but then I succeed, so. Why is creative expression important to you? I think because it adds just, it makes life worth living in my opinion, because we have our cut and dry creative types, obviously, like the actors, the directors, whatever have you. But, you know, I've done office jobs before and I've had coworkers that had a creative touch like they added their own like little touch to this like rigid and you can see a sparkle in their eye and you can see that like that's why they go to work and that's mm -hmm. why they do those things so I think that's why creative expression is very important on any level um, just it adds that the reason to live and the reason to continue on give an example of an obstacle that you've experienced how did you overcome this obstacle I think I think uh, honestly a personal obstacle was just being just um, just kind of being confirmed that like I, I did have something that wasn't necessarily like normal so to speak like I, I knew I was always like just full of energy at certain points and, and, and down and I knew so like I, I eventually I mean I'm an open book and I and the reason why I talk about it is because I want people to talk about stuff and so when I was diagnosed with uh, bipolar disorder that's when I said, okay, this is the obstacle. I can either suppress it because I've been taught to suppress things. I've been taught to keep things quiet. But then I said, no, the op this is the obstacle. The, I'm not on this world or I'm not still living just to suppress things and to, to keep people and, and feel that they have something to be ashamed of. So I, I've definitely like opened up discussions. I've talked to people who are in pharmaceutical school right now because they wanted to know how certain medications react to certain people. And I've talked to people who have gone to counseling because of how my story is with them, like my story is with counseling and say, it helps. So I think that's the obstacle. Like I have to be able to swallow my pill and say, this is part of my identity, but it's not my identity. It's part of it, but it's never gonna define me. So I think that's what the obstacle that, you know, and, and people, and the worst part is people are like, oh, you're such a hero. And I'm like, no, I'm human. <laughs> I'm human, we all have our certain things, and I'm, I'm just very open to whoever wants to hear it. So I think that's the obstacle that I went over. Like Once I got the obstacle over myself, over that shame, over that, I don't wanna, so that's, that's pretty much it. List the things that you bring to the table that define your uniqueness. I think the number one factor will be my versatility, and that just isn't limited towards the types of roles I can play, but just the fact that I can literally converse with anyone and have a natural rapport with them. 
and I've been, and honestly, I just think it's just being a nice person and listening to what they have to say, but I've been told by multiple people from all walks of life saying like, oh yeah, you're very easy to talk to. And we, we told you things that it took us five years to tell us someone to tell someone else. So I think just being that type of versatility, like have that type of versatility. And I think it doesn't necessarily make me unique a hundred percent, but I think it sets me as far apart from someone else that's like on the road, so to speak, so. What has drawn you to this profession? It honestly makes me feel the most human. Uh, and it's just, it's just one of those things where like, because I'm a huge fan of like the film movement, the, 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 the Italian neorealist, like way back, because it's, the fact that it wasn't about like action heroes or, or, or all these magical characters, it, it's, it's just about people. So with every role, I try and find like the humanity, like, and that's why I like it because it gives me the option to explore that and say, okay, well, this character is this profession, but how does this character feel about this? Or what's this character's family like? It just makes me feel human. And it's, it's kind of interesting to say, but because in reality, not to be too confident or arrogant, but I can apply to multiple positions and, and get interviews for those. and. I've done those jobs, you know, where I have to wear really a suit every day, and it's great for other people, but for me, it, it takes away my humanity in a way. And not in like, oh, I'm a corporate sellout, but in the sense of like, I need to experience the things that aren't said, and that's why I like this type of business, so. How do you handle rejection or failure? Um, for the most part, I handle it really well, I think. I. Of course, the first initial reaction, especially if you wanted something, it hurts. And that's part of life, hurting and missing out, and that's okay. But I usually have a decent recovery time. I would say I usually allow myself five to ten minutes of just pure, unadulterated breakdown, crying, whatever it may, may, may take. Like, I've, I've literally cried in a car before after uh, after failing a test that I wanted, and and I didn't care who was looking because it was a it was a full parking lot, and I cried. I put the windows up and I just let it all out, and I said, okay, I have ten minutes, and then then I got to go to lunch with my friend, and that's what actually what happened. Like I cried and I sat down, and, I, and and so that's just the way it is. Like rejection is part of life, and and at the same time, it's just you can't like let past rejections get in the way of like future opportunities, because to be honest, I've been rejected so many times that I've lost count. So I think that's why like I. Just kind of have to roll with it, and especially in, in this industry, rejection uh, not or not having the right way to necessarily deal with rejection is just uh, like an internal killer, and it will just burn out people faster. I've seen it happen, and and but yeah, so I think that's why I allow myself like five to ten minutes of unadulterated emotion, as long as I'm not hurting anyone, as long as it could be just breaking down in the middle of like a, like anywhere and just get just crying and. And trust me, I've seen people like look at me, and, and it's just one of those things where I'm like, it's, I just tell people, it's okay, you just have to let this go. Just, just let me have this five minutes or three minutes. And, but it's, it's part of life, so. We all cry. Yeah. <laughs> what experiences have you had working with a diverse group of people? Um, I think working as a peer advisor at UCLA for community college students, because uh, we, at UCLA, there, we, we divided basically the school into uh, North Campus or South Campus. North Campus was like the soft science majors or like, like English, psych psychology, anthropology, etc. And the South Campus is like engineering, nursing, and and we had so many people from different majors, and which worked out because when we helped out people, they had different majors, they had different aspirations, and and it was nice and and it was really interesting just getting to know different kinds of people and but being able to like like if somebody had a question on essay writing. They would ask me like I had a I had a friend that asked me to help write an essay because he was you know he got these wonderful grades and all these classes but he couldn't formulate an essay and I and and then me myself as an anthropology major and some of my friends were English majors we were able to knock it all out and that friend came to us uh, like two days later like you do that like <laughs> multiple times for your classes and we're like yeah <laughs> like it's part of like. And like we could never do that, and then we're like, well, we could never memorize all these parts of the of the human skull. So you know, it's just helping that, like helping a group just mutually create that objective is is great. A diverse a diverse group. It's it adds more fun to it. It adds, it adds like life and an extra bond bonding time. So, what is your favorite TV show or film, and why? Um, my favorite film has been constantly the movie Hitch. 
Um, and it's such like a, because if you look at it, it's a corny romantic comedy. But I think the reason like why I like it so much is because I've identified with both of the male protagonists at one point in my life. I was always, sometimes I'm, I was like that love sick guy. At the same time, I've always been that person who has helped other people in that field. So it's just, I think that's why I like it. It's just a very like lighthearted comedy, and there's some truth moments within that script and, the, and that deliverance of the acting. So I think that's why I like it a lot. I just keep pictured getting kicked in the head with a on a jet ski right there. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you see yourself in ten years? I would like to be happy. That's basically what. I, but professionally, I'm. I would either like to own my own <coughs> photography, my own photography studio, and just basically have like a team of photographers that I have, and then just kind of like oversee it, specializing within headshots, because especially it's like how it is for acting uh, and mm -hmm. performing. It's just really hard to find a nice venue that you don't have to pay a permit for. So I think that's why. And I love like having like the nuts and bolts. So like I like the idea of like managing like just like a des like a designated space. And so hopefully I'll have enough money saved up to basically take care of like all the expenses for that and just like let everything come to play. Just because I know how happy it is for a photographer to have a place to shoot and how nice it is for an actor or actress to feel comfortable and and to do their headshots and and because when you get that right headshot. It's just right. Mm -hmm. There's there's no other way to describe it. So uh, to to be able to foster all those happy emotions, not just for me but for other people, that's one thing I would like to do. So. Okay. That's all of our questions that we have. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.